Anyway, are you ready to get into the lesson this morning? I am. So don't forget, I'm going to repeat the beginning each week. I know it may be kind of repetitive. That's what repeating is. Uh, because we're doing this online, I want to make sure that everyone who watches this now, uh, maybe new or watching it later, they understand what the series is about. Uh, this morning, we're going to be continuing this series, Is It In There? Uh, is It In There? Uh, the idea is that we are saying some things that are used in church all across America as if they're biblical, but in reality, they're not found in the Bible. You know, the most read book in history is the most misquoted book in history. And, but you think at least with nowadays with social media, internet, uh, it would get better because we have more access to the Bible, but we don't. It's actually getting worse and people sharing stuff all day long and it's not even in the Bible. Uh, so make sure you check out what's actually in the Bible first before you uh, think about uh, sharing something. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, look at God's word is more important and just reading it face value without any preconceived notion is really the best thing we can do. Um, we'll find out that it's so much better than the false statements that are out there. Um, and I know also sometimes uh, I share some of these and people will tell me, oh, these are just rewordings of biblical verse or maybe a, a rewording of a biblical concept. Sometimes, and, uh, you know, we look at them and say, okay, well, that's kind of a little bit of rewarding, but others are really just false and dangerous false teaching. And so um, it's, it's uh, important for us to know God's word and know what God says. It says in Psalm 119, verse 16, I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. And so that is so important for us to keep that in mind of really what God wants us to be looking at. It's that delighting, being excited in his word and not forgetting it. So let's begin to speak truth from God's word. All right. Then remember, each week we'll look at a fun phrase and, uh, and then also a serious doctrinal teaching. And we'll learn together from God's word what is truth. So here's the fun one. Uh, is it in there? You ever heard this phrase? In the last days, you will not be able to know the seasons except by the changing of the leaves. Um, and the idea and the thought is that as we go towards the end of the prophetic time of last days, that the, the seasons will begin to merge together. And I've heard people say, man, it just doesn't feel like we even have winter anymore. We don't have summer anymore. And uh, so maybe this is the last days. Well, even a thorough Google search will not reveal the origin of the saying. Uh, but we do know this. It's not found in the Bible. Um, now, we do see something similar in Matthew 24, verse 32 to 33, concerning the fig tree. Remember the, the statement that Jesus was doing the parable of the fig tree and its leaves. Christ was using the budding of leaves as a metaphor for the signs that Christ will return. But he wasn't talking about that in the last days, all the seasons are going to change. Nowhere do we see that the seasons are going to be altered in the last days. Um, and so uh, just kind of a, a fun one. Uh, but I think it's also someone that uh, not that big of a deal, but it's just something when someone says that next time you go, hey, that's not even found in the Bible. Stop using that. All right. Let's look at a more serious misunderstanding. Is it in there? Perhaps nothing that one Christian says to another has been spoken with greater heartfelt sincerity than this statement. God won't put more on you than you can bear I, or some form of that. You know, I, th yes, that's what I mean. Heartfelt sincerity. I think uh, believers say this so often to people that are struggling and going through hard times. They try to give them something to feel better about. I've heard this said in and outside of church all my life. It's one of those things that seems like a self-evident truth because we've heard it so many times. It must be true. And given the fact that our God is a loving father, it seems also to be perfect sense too. That our loving father wouldn't give us more than we can bear. Many Christians would immediately say that the teaching of the saying, God will not put more on you than you can bear, is in the Bible. They'll say, oh, yeah, it's there. I remember it. But actually, the Bible teaches something very different. In fact, the Bible teaches the exact opposite. Most of the time, what people think of is true. They'll reference 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Look at this verse, and you'll see, remind, remember what I was talking about. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, no temptation has taken you except that which is common to man. God is faithful, and he will not permit you to be tempted of all that you can endure, but will, with the temptation, also may make a way up to escape that you may be able to bear it. That's a great verse because it tells us that God will not allow us to be tempted beyond what we can endure or bear. But the misunderstanding we are looking at is not about temptation to sin or temptation to act in a way that would not be equal to a Christ follower. The misunderstanding is the idea that somehow this means 
that God will not allow us to have burdens beyond our ability to bear. Uh, it's important to make a distinction between temptation to sin and trials that we could face. This verse in 1 Corinthians 10, 13 means God will not allow us to be tempted to sin beyond what we can bear, beyond what we can endure the temptation based on the strength of Christ who lives in us. He is the way of escape. It has nothing to do with trials and tribulations and burdens. Troubles and trials in life are another matter. God will, uh, will God allow life circumstances to be more than our human strength and ability can handle? Well, if I was to tell you that he would and does, you may doubt that or even deny that and say, no, God will not allow that to happen. But would you agree then that Paul is a trustworthy source and authority of this matter? And if you would say, well, Paul is a better authority than you are, Pastor, I'm okay with that. Let us consider what he says on the subject in regard to his circumstances. Paul relates a story of a time he clearly felt that his burdens were beyond his ability to handle. Look at 1 Corinthians 1.8. For we would not, brothers, have you ignorant of our trouble. So he's telling them, hey, I want you to know. I want you to really know the struggle we're going through and the troubles we're going through, which came to us in Asia. We were pressured beyond measure above strength so that we despaired even of life. Now, notice what he says here, that we were pressured beyond measure above strength so that we were despaired even of life. And remember, this is the great Apostle Paul. Some could argue that he was the most effective Christian who ever lived. Sometimes we tend to put our biblical heroes on pedestals, and we quickly forget that they were men and women who had experiences and feelings just like us. Their pain and hurt just as much as ours does. Their, fear, their fears are just as vivid as ours are, and they had to apply faith and courage just as we do. Now, I want to zero on the phrase above strength or beyond our strength, beyond our ability to endure, uh, beyond the measure of strength that we had despaired even of life. That is not an opinion I have that I'm trying to convince you to believe. This is the Apostle Paul speaking. He said he and his companions were pressed beyond measure above strength so that they despaired even of life. I would say that Paul was saying here, this was more than I could bear. Right? This is more than we could bear, pressed beyond strength, beyond measure, so we had despaired even of life. Isn't it interesting how the Bible can correct faulty beliefs that we have held for a long time just by reading the Bible? The question that immediately comes to mind, and maybe yours also, is if God does allow us to have burdens greater than we can bear, why? Why would he do that? After all, he loves us. So what possible good reason would there be in him allowing such a thing? Now, keep this in mind. Making it happen and allowing are two different things. Making it happen would be saying God makes us have burdens. God makes us have trials. That's not where God says, nor do we find that in Scripture either. But consequences of life, consequences of other people's choices, consequences of just uh, the, the sinful world that we live in, of the sickness and disease that's out there, uh, these are all consequences of, of what goes on around it that affect us. And those, those things that affect us have consequences on it. And sometimes God allows those consequences, and sometimes he doesn't allow them based on what's going on in his desire for his will to happen. But here's what he says. The Apostle Paul continued on in 2 Corinthians 1, nine. He said this, We had the sentence of death in ourselves, so that we would not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead. And he catch that? He said that in this situation, this struggle that we're going through, uh, we had the sentence of death. In other words, we were going to die. It, this is what was going to happen. We were going to die so that we could not trust in ourselves. So that we would not be the ones we trusted, but we would trust in a God who raises the dead. So if we did die, uh, you know, God would raise the dead. Can you see that God is accomplishing something good by allowing us to face trials that are too much for us? He uses these burdens to teach us, to put us, our total trust in him and his power and for us to stop trying to handle life on our own and for the others that are around us. Sometimes we think it's about us, right? Why are you doing this to me, right? But what about the others around us? Paul's using this circumstance, writing it down in 2 Corinthians. So you right now could read it as a 
testimony to what God did in his life to encourage you now for your life. So even what Paul did back then as he wrote it down was for people to thousands of years later be reading it. So what's going on in your life in a trial or tribulation at the time may have nothing to do with you. Maybe it's about God and God's glory and that you say, through this trial, I have peace and joy in, in God. He's the one that's helping me through this. I've been pressed way beyond I can handle my own. But through Christ's strength, I can handle this. So then when God acts to uh, to then kind of switch it around to kind of resolve the situation or to pour out his supernatural peace in our hearts, which can happen, it will be absolutely clear who the source of the victory is. And when we learn in a deeper way to trust the Lord with our lives and our circumstances, we learn that it's about God and his glory. To say that God will not put a burden on you greater than you can bear is not a biblical teaching. And so we shouldn't really say that to people that are hurting. Now, we don't want to say, well, yeah, God is allowing this to teach you a lesson. That'd be wrong, too. That'd be a wrong way to approach it, right? We don't know why it's happening. We don't know what God is using this for. But we can say God is with you, right? God is with you at all the times through this. To believe that, you know, that that if you believe, like, sorry, if you believe that God would put a burden on you greater than you can handle, uh, may force you into a corner, uh, you ever thought about this? Like if someone said, well, God won't give you more than you can handle, but you can't handle it. Or you don't want to let people around you think that you're not handling it. So you'll pretend like everything's okay. Right? Think about it. Someone says, well, how are you feeling? I'm fine. I'm fine. Why? Because you can't say I'm crushed right now beyond measure, beyond my strength. I feel like I'm about to die. This is too great of a problem for me. You can't say that to someone who just said, oh, God won't give you more than you can handle. Because now you're saying, but I can't handle this. See, we, we force people in that that false pretense. So many Christians pretend that their burdens are nothing at all when they are uh, with other people. But in their hearts and, and when they're all by themselves, they start doubting even whether God loves them. And they start wondering why God hadn't helped them with their burdens. People reach ridiculous and demanding conclusions because of this type of confusion. Some have been made to feel like they, their burdens are weighing them down emotionally. It must mean that they don't have enough faith. Maybe something's wrong in their life. Maybe they have a hidden sin in their life. Some uh, kind of act, you know, their, their action or trying to pretend is like their faith, you know. Uh, I have faith, yay, you know, I have to put a good smile. But don't fall for this. Know that although your father may at times allow you to experience a burden greater than your ability to endure, he will carry you through it. In fact, he will carry you and help you all the way through it because it's his strength. So it's not whether you can bear it or not, because you can't. It's that he's there to bear it for you. The key is to cast our cares on him. After all, he loves us and will sustain us until the Christ passes, or even if it never passes. What if you died in that process? Well, still God would get the glory based on your reaction to what's going on and giving him the glory through it. In the meantime, we can rest in his arms. We can know that there's nothing wrong with our faith or our commitment to him. We, uh, we can know that there's nothing wrong with his love for us. It is just life. And life sometimes hurts unbearably. Even when it does, he is there to hold us and to see us that we pass through uh, safely through the hard times. And so it's not whether we can bear it or not. Just say, I can't bear it. I know I can't. This is too much for me. More strength beyond my strength, beyond my abilities, just as those that Paul said there. And they will know that Christ is with us in that situation. And with that, we can have joy, even in that horrible circumstance, because of Christ. We can have hope because of Christ. And that's a much better, much more comforting thought to think about than to try to put that pressure on people to say, oh, God won't give you more than you can bear. And also they think, oh, I must be a horrible Christian because I can't bear this. Hey, that, my friends, is comforting. And I hope it's comforting to you. And I hope you were encouraged by this. And uh, hopefully we learning this. And as I start to go through this series more and more, you start to think, ah, I know the answer to this. Uh, because you start to see it in your own life more and more as you start to see God's word being shown. Amen. Uh, let me pray with you this morning, church. And uh, I'll let you go. Thanks for uh, tuning in with us. And hopefully you were encouraged by it. Love you all. Let's pray.